Anything worth doing is worth doing poorly. That's the title of the video. Let's get into it. Hey, I'm Isaac Shano Johnson. If you don't know me, I'm a musician, composer, producer, and I make videos about all that fun stuff. Music, music composition, music production. So make sure you hit that subscribe button to see videos like this in the future. Also, really quick, I do apologize if there's excess background noise in this one. It's quite hot where I am in California right now, so I gotta keep the AC on, but I apologize. That might result in some extra background noise. The idea for this video I originally wrote about on my blog, blog.musicbyisj.com. Go check it out put a link in the description. And I don't know where I first heard this idea, but I really like it because the more I think about it, the more I deal with music and deal with learning stuff, the more I realize that it's very true. And it's something that I try to tell my students in private lessons and in classes quite often, that anything worth doing is worth doing poorly. The first reason I think this mentality is useful is that in order to get better at doing something, you have to do it. And I know that's kind of obvious, like, well, okay, yeah, of course you have to do something to get better at doing it, man. But like, I think people sometimes don't realize that you have to do it to get better at it. Like, I think of improvising solos or producing music. If you've never produced music before and you've never improvised a solo before, you're not gonna sound good doing it. It's gonna sound bad. In order to get better at doing that, that might mean you have to produce some bad music and write or improvise some bad solos. You kind of have to do the bad stuff. You have to be bad at doing it in order to be good at doing it. And I know that's kind of obvious. Like, well, yeah, of course. But I think it's a mentality that is very like worthwhile to remember because sometimes I think me as a musician I kind of get caught up in making everything perfect and making everything really good even if it's something that you know I haven't done a whole lot or done for a very long time you have to do it poorly at first to get better at it and that's kind of it right eventually you'll get better at it eventually you'll be writing music better you'll be improvising better solos and at that point I think you'll realize that yeah it is necessary, basically, to do it poorly at first. Even if you're very aware of how poorly you're doing something. I think this is where it becomes a huge like problem for a lot of people is when you start doing something, if you realize that you're bad at it, that can be very discouraging because you know you, what you're doing is not the result that you want. What you're playing isn't what you want it to sound like. What you, The music you're making isn't how you want it to sound. But in order to get better, you have to do it. So doing it poorly at first is worthwhile because it'll get you to that other, other area. It'll get you to that other stage where you're doing it well. Next thing, I realize there's a lot more to learning how to produce music and learning how to improvise or whatever it is that you're thinking about learning how to play an instrument than just doing it, right? There's a lot more to it than just picking up an instrument, just making music. But the more you do it, the more you'll learn how many different ways you can do that thing, right? Even if it's something like producing music, the more you do it, you'll the more you'll realize, oh, this specific effect, this specific idea, this specific way of making music will get this specific result. Maybe that's what I want right now. Maybe it's not. Maybe I'll use this other idea. The more you experiment, the more you do lots of different things, right? And same thing with improvising. Improvising a whole ton won't get you to sound amazing on improvising just on that alone. Because I do think part of it, you need to know what the music you want to be able to play sounds like. You need to know what those pieces of language are, what those ideas are on the piano or whatever instrument you're playing in order to play them. But improvising, figuring out lines will get you to be able to play lines that you like more. It'll get you better at finding lines in your head that you want to play and playing them. It'll get you better at just feeling more comfortable when you're playing or improvising a solo. Of course, there's lots of stuff you can study in composing or producing music or improvising or playing an instrument or whatever it is. There's lots of stuff that you can study and learn and it's a lot of it is worthwhile to learn, but if you only do the study, if you only do the research, if you only do the theory, then you're not gonna get better at the actual thing that you're trying to do, the act of composing, the act of improvising a solo, because you're not doing it. That doesn't mean that studying and 
learning theory and studying music and learning about music isn't important. It is important, but they need to go together. Doing the thing, composing, and studying composition have to be done together, right? In order to get better at composing, yes, study the music of the composers that you want to be able to write like. Definitely worthwhile. But at the same time you're doing that, try to write a piece of music like them. It might not be good. <laughs> But who cares, right? If you just started learning how to write music, yeah, your first like few pieces are gonna be bad. But who cares? They, nobody needs to hear them, right? You, nobody needs to hear the music that you write when you first start out. What matters is that you eventually write some music that you're proud of and that you wanna show people, right? Or even if you don't wanna show people, the eventually the goal is that you enjoy the process and that you are able to write music that you want to be able to write. Right, and if that means you have to write 100 bad pieces before you get there, then you still achieve that goal of getting to that one piece that you wanted to write, or getting to the point where you can write music that you want to be able to write. And it can be incredibly embarrassing because, you know, when, when you're learning how to write music, you're gonna have to write a bad piece of music. You're inevitably gonna write a bad piece of music. So I teach a middle school jazz ensemble and I told them this, a while ago that you have to play a bad solo in order to play a good solo and they kind of laughed because they were like oh yeah of course right so i told them i was like no seriously i've been playing music for a while and i've played a lot of bad solos in front of people sometimes and it's embarrassing but i was like i had to do those solos in order to get better right obviously you want to try and limit how much people hear you play bad solos but like i had to do that right part of learning to solo well is or however you want to solo is learning what you don't want to sound like right learning how to solo poorly right because if you want to be able to play the notes that you want to be able to play you have to know the notes that you don't want to play right you have to know both of those different things you need to know what you don't like in order to know what you like you need to know what the quote-unquote right notes are to know what the quote-unquote wrong notes are whatever it is that's what you need to be able to know take me for example i went to berkeley college of music and i studied film scoring and composition and in the composition department i actually think it was a fairly good program for me in a lot of ways because i <laughs> wrote a lot of music while i was there and a lot of it's not good. I'm not proud of it and I don't want people to hear it, right? Because a lot of it was like exercises for class or pieces of music that just don't sound like me now or didn't really sound like me at the time even because I was trying to figure out what style of music I wanted to write. And so what? That's the point, right? I need to write those pieces. I need to figure out what it is that I do want to write and what I don't want to write. And in order to figure out what I do want to write, I'm gonna have to figure out what I don't want to write, right? I mean, it, this goes for whatever it is. You have to do it in order to get better at it. So it's worth doing poorly if it's worth doing. And think of the act of doing it as practicing. The act of writing music is practicing composing, practicing the skill of composing. And that's what you wanna get better at if that's what you wanna get better at. Presumably you're here on this channel. I. I'm guessing you're into music or something, but whatever it is that you want to get better at, the act of doing it is the practice of getting better. And you need to practice it to get better. So you got to do it. If you want to get better at writing music, write a ton of music. Seriously, write a ton of music for a year. Try and write a piece of music every day. You'll get better at writing music. Now, you're not going to be amazing after that. You might not be the best composer in the world. You might not be the most well-known composer in the world. But I guarantee you, if you try that, you will be a lot better at writing music than when you started. And I think this phrase, anything worth doing is worth doing poorly, is a good reminder that the process is what you should enjoy. Yes, you want to be the best piano or guitar or violin player or flute player or whatever. You want to be amazing at that instrument. You want to be able to play whatever you want, right? You want to be able to write whatever type of music you want. You want to be able to improvise whatever type of solos you want. Whatever your goal is in music, you want to be able to compose or produce whatever type of music, right? Whatever your goal is in getting to that goal, doing the thing should be enjoyable. Enjoy the process of getting better, of writing music, of playing your instrument, because all of it is part of that same goal that you're reaching towards. In order to get to that end goal of 
playing or improvising or writing or producing well, you have to do it poorly. I also like to remind my students, if this is something that you've never done before, don't expect yourself to be good. Get rid of that expectation. I think once you get rid of that expectation in yourself, it kind of like relieves a lot of stress, I guess, of uh, writing music or whatever it is, because then you're like, oh right, I've been playing violin for a year. I shouldn't sound good right now. It'd be amazing if I did sound good after playing for only a year, right? Personally, I played, started playing violin about a year ago. I'm not very good, right? But I don't expect myself to be good because I've been playing for a year and honestly, I haven't practiced all that much, but I enjoy playing it. I enjoy, when I do play, I enjoy playing it. I enjoy the process of getting better, of learning how this new instrument works, of learning how to place the bow and everything. And I think that's the, that's the goal that you want to work towards, is just enjoy that process of practicing, of getting better, of improving, of trying different stuff out and seeing what you like, seeing what you don't like, right? Because all of that is getting you towards this end goal, whatever that end goal might be. Okay, <laughs> that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it useful. I hope you learned something about music. If you did, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. And as always, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Peace.